Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about a magical device, this mystery lever here, the manual transmission in a Porsche 911. You know, it was only 20 years ago or so that having an automatic transmission in a sports car was frowned upon, it was like dating your cousin. Sure, it was an easy ride, but the results were less than optimal, and society frowned upon you. Well, how things have changed. These days it seems everybody's dating their cousin, because you very rarely see a manual transmission in a sports car. In fact, a lot of sports car manufacturers have completely removed the option for a manual transmission. So I'm very grateful that Porsche Engineering continues to supply us with a manual transmission, and what a transmission it is, oh my goodness. I had the manual transmission in my 991.2, 911 of uh, C4S, that was a magic transmission. That was the first seven speed transmission available in any sports car. And the 991.1 transmission was nice, but it could be a little vague. Whereas the 991.2 transmission improved by having a, a more precise feel to it. My biggest complaint with the 991.2 transmission, and it was beautiful, was that the throw was so long. Um, the lever sat quite high up and there was a, it was like rowing a boat. It was quite a long throw. Uh, that was improved in the Carrera T and also in the GT3 Touring Edition, which had the six speed transmission. That transmission was gorgeous, but it felt a little clunky and noisy. Uh, whereas the uh, Carrera T, I think was the best of the transmissions in, in that generation. Uh, they just shortened it and it just felt a little more precise. Here we are in the 992 generation. And this manual transmission is easily the best manual transmission I have ever driven. Certainly the best in any Porsche and perhaps the best in any car full stop. It is amazing. But we'll get onto that shortly. What I wanted to do was talk a little bit about the functionality of the manual transmission. This might even be a little confusing to a lot of you that have never even driven a manual transmission. And I also wanted to talk a little bit about why the manual transmission is so deeply on decline, but why we might actually be wrong about that. Why the manual transmission is still such an amazing experience within a sports car. But first, I just wanted to have a look at it. I mean, look at it, it is beautiful. It is perfectly proportioned within the cabin of the 911. I like the look of the 991.2 transmission, but this is so much better. Uh, the 991.2 transmission was a little bit long and a little bit awkward looking, I thought, whereas this one, uh, the gear lever looks a little bit like a golf transmission, but it is, oh, it's lovely. Uh, unlike the PDK transmission lever, which by the way, they've already redesigned because of complaints about it, uh, but doesn't look that much better with the redesign. This really looks made for purpose. It just fits perfectly in the center console. It falls directly to your hand when you put your hand on it. And because it's such a short throw, uh, you're not moving your whole arm. You can just do it with your wrist. It is, <laughs> it is magic. Uh, so I think, for no other reason I would get it just because it looks so great in the cabin. But yes, as we'll see, it is also a fantastic transmission. So let's stop messing around and take it for a drive. Uh, we're gonna be driving this beautiful Carrera S in Guards Red. We'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of this uh, video. But for now, let's see how this manual transmission works. We'll start her up. So it's a seven speed with five gears across the top. So that, that could be a little daunting for, for manual transmission first timers. And the re reverse gear is hard over, so if you just push it over, that's first and second there, but if you really push it, it up into reverse. We'll take the handbrake off, which in the 992 is so much better than the 991.1 because it's here, and it's a lot more visible, so less chance of me leaving the handbrake off and the car rolling down the drive, as I've had before. We'll turn on the sports exhaust, of course, and off we go. Now, interestingly, just like in the 991 generation, the gear that you've got selected is shown next to the speedometer here. However, it's not shown in the Ford gears until you get to five miles an hour for some reason. I'll show you as we move forward, there it goes. Five miles an hour, it shows now that we're in first. We can put the clutch in, we can move down to second. Off we go. Why is that so annoying to me? Well, I'll tell you why. Because when you come to a stop, say at a stoplight or a traffic light, and you put your foot on the clutch and you brake, and then you forget whether you were in third gear or first gear when you came to a stop. You look down here to see what gear you're in and it doesn't tell you. You actually have to take the gear back out and put it back in to make sure you're in first. Off we go. Ah. So the next thing Porsche does to make this, a, this transmission a little easier to use is they gate off gears that they think you shouldn't be going to. For example, right now I'm in fourth gear and my next gear obviously is going to be fifth gear. 
but if I push the lever over and try and get it to seventh, it won't let me. I'll, I'll demonstrate. So fourth, clutch in, push over, and up. And into fifth I go. It wouldn't let me go into seventh. However, now I'm in fifth, I can go straight to seventh. Off to seventh. And once I'm in seventh, I can drop back down to any gear I like. So I can, I'm going slow enough that I could drop to fourth or even third at this point. Uh, so it won't, it won't force me only into sixth. So if I get into a situation where I need full power, I can jump straight there, I'll demonstrate. So I'm in seventh, I drop down to fourth, I can even drop down to third, and away I go. It makes using this transmission a complete joy. And most of the time, we're just going to be using gears one through to six. Sixth gear is where you get the maximum speed in this car. Seventh gear is really just a fuel saving gear. It is very, very tall, I will demonstrate. If I go into seventh gear now, fifth, sixth, seventh, I'm doing 90 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, and as you can see, I'm doing two and a half thousand revs at 100 miles an hour. It is a very tall gear, and it is it provides no torque at all. There's very little acceleration in that gear, so that gear is just for cruising on the highway for long distances. Okay, so the next interesting feature is the auto throttle blipping, which is also available in the 991 generation. What is it? It automatically blips the throttle to match the revs of the gear that you're going into. Instead of waiting for the synchro mesh to align the transmission with the engine speed, it blips the throttle instead. Uh, now this is something that good manual drivers have been doing for years, but now it's automated. So you can turn this off and on as you see fit. If you think that you're pretty good at blipping the throttle yourself, you can do this yourself. But if you want it to get it perfect every time, the car will do this for you. And in a way, it's cheating, I guess. But I found this feature to be the most talked about and enjoyed feature of anyone driving my old 911. They used to come back from driving that car and go, oh my god, the throttle blipping was amazing. That's so cool. So let me demonstrate it. If we speed up here a little bit, and I'm going to pretend like I'm coming off this off-ramp, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start braking and changing through the gears. I go into fourth. I go into third. Finally I come into second. See? And it blips the throttle. And I'm not going to take this off ramp. Accelerate again. Off we go. Back into fourth. Ah! Oh, I need to overtake someone. Back into third. Blips the throttle. It really makes you sound like a hero, like you know what you're doing. It is a really cool feature, but as I say, if you're a good heel-to-toe driver, you can brake and blip the throttle at the same time, you can turn this off as well. But overall, the usability of this manual transmission is amazing. The clutch is super light and predictable. It's right in the middle of the lift, and the transmission itself is smooth yet notchy. That is, you can feel when it drops into that gear, and it's weighted just perfectly so you know that I'm coming out of fifth gear I just need to let it move back to its own center and then back to third again and into fourth ah oh, it is a joy so Nick if the manual transmission or the stick shift as they're called here in Fahrenheit land uh, are so wonderful why does everybody get the PDK or the automatic transmission well there are many good reasons for this because the PDK is an amazing transmission obviously probably the biggest reason people get them is ease of use you know you just put it in drive you put your foot down off you go uh, they are also faster than the manual transmission these days with the event of dual clutch transmissions uh, they can shift so much faster and predict what gear you're going to be in you know anytime you get caught off you just put your foot down and it jumps straight to the gear that you need to be incredible yes pdk really does read your mind uh, and it does feel faster. You know, every time I drive one of my friend's cars with a PDK or a loaner car with a PDK, I'm always, whoa, bang, bang, bang. The way it goes through the gear so quickly, there's no lift off, uh, it is incredible. And that's shown in the performance figures, you know. The difference between a manual transmission and an automatic transmission just naught to 61 miles an hour, there's, there's about half a second in it because no manual transmission driver is ever going to be able to shift as fast as, as the dual clutch and the PDK. Another reason is fuel efficiency. Well, the official figures are not that different. I think two miles to the gallon between the two, the reality is so much different. No manual transmission driver 
is ever going to always be chopping up to seventh gear whenever they get the chance, like the PDK does. No manual transmission driver is gonna be on top of economical driving like the computer in the PDK is. So the reality is that it's actually about five miles to the gallon difference, which is significant, but then at this price range, who really cares? And of course, it's a more versatile transmission, the PDK. Not everybody can drive a manual transmission, so if you're sharing your car, with members of your family, say your wife or your boyfriend or some idiot in your family can't drive stick, uh, then of course you need to get the PDK so that the car can be driven by everybody. Those are the main reasons why everybody gets PDK. But there are some very good reasons for getting the manual transmission still. And the number one reason, obviously, is driver involvement. Yes, the difference between driving a sports car with the PDK and driving with a manual is significant because you're far more involved. You're the one doing the changes. You're the one making the decisions. And having this extra level of involvement uh, in the driving of your car really does enhance the experience. Secondly, the manual transmission obviously is a little cheaper, $2,700 here in the US because you get the uh, Sport Chrono Pack as part of it. Thirdly, it's a little bit of a theft deterrence or a deterrence for people wanting to drive your car. Certainly when I would move from a PDK 911 to a manual transmission 911, I noticed a, a significant drop off in my friends at work and my friends at home wanting to drive my car because so many of them these days have no clue how to drive a manual or if they do, they're a little intimidated by it so they don't want to drive it. And next, often a manual transmission does hold its value a little better than the PDK. Uh, and as manuals become more and more rare, this is more and more the case. Enthusiasts in the second-hand market look for a manual transmission as opposed to the PDK. So there is a cost benefit as well. But finally, it, there's a cool factor about it. I know, no one has ever accused me of being cool. Ever since my next door neighbor, who was a year younger than me and a girl, beat me up when I was five years old, everybody knew <laughs> that I was never gonna be cool. But with a manual transmission car, there is a slight fringe of coolness about me all of a sudden. I know, maybe you don't see it, most people don't. But yes, a manual transmission, definitely cooler than an automatic transmission, just ask anybody. So let's have a talk about the car that I'm driving today as well. It is a Carrera S and it is in guards red and it has black wheels, decals on the side, black slats, uh, a whole bunch of stuff basically that I advise people never to get. But somehow it really works on this car, don't you think? Yeah, the guard's red with the black wheels and all the black highlights around it really looks something special. And this is a Carrera S. Now this is something I don't talk about often enough. The Carrera S, in my experience, is definitely an additional layer of fun when it comes to a 911. I've had the Carrera 4S previously uh, because I like the wide body and I was driving in snow. But every time I jump into an S, I realized what a downgrade and fun the 4S is. Because the S, being rear wheel drive only, gives the 911 its more natural pose and it allows the rear end to step out a little more than the 4S does. So once again, you want the most fun out of your 911? Get the rear wheel drive model. The four wheel drive does suck away some of the enjoyment of driving these cars. But yes, this very cool looking Guards Red Carrera S with the manual transmission and some very nice options is currently for sale at my local dealer. I grabbed it for this review and I grabbed it to complete the options videos that I'm working on, um, but I've been amazed uh, at how many comments people have made about what a great car this is. And as I've said before, anyone that's looking to buy a Porsche, any model, and you're struggling to get a discount, do let me know on this email address and I'll see what I can get for you from my local dealer. They do set discounts for my viewers. I'm always happy to help with that because you guys are always so loyal to me. And giving business to my local dealer means that they always look after me with cars and let me do these reviews, etc., etc. So here we are back at my house. Yes, the manual transmission <laughs> looks so beautiful, works so perfectly, just so smooth but yet notchy. It's the best of any manual transmission I've ever driven. It is perfection in my mind. Uh, I would get no other, but I understand why people still get the PDK. But if you're even a little bit tempted to get the manual, oh, this is an experience like no other. It really elevates the enjoyment of owning and driving these cars. Ah, what a lovely bit of technology. Now, the last thing I'd say is people often ask me, why is the manual transmission only available in the S, 
the 4S, the GTS, and a few of the other middle models, not on the base, not on the higher end models, well, I can never know what goes on at Porsche, but I can make a good guess. Firstly, um, I think the manual transmission is a little bit of a war between the bean counters and the engineers at Porsche. The engineers love the manual transmission, that's why they've done such an amazing job with it, but the bean counters hate the manual transmission because it throws out Porsche's averages on emission standards. So the bean counters want as few of these on the road as possible, which is why I think it's no longer available in the uh, Carrera base and the Carrera 4, just in the S's and above. And for the upper models like the Turbo and the Turbo S, why don't they have the manual transmission for those? Why don't they put the engineering into that? Well, I think no one would buy it. The type of person that buys a Turbo or Turbo S are not really looking for driver involvement. They're more looking for maximum speed, and that's what the PDK provides. So I think they would never bother with, with making a manual for the, those top-end cars, which are more GT cars than sports cars, the Turbo and the Turbo S. So that's the, that's the manual transmission. Incredible. Just, just I just love it. Uh, I will definitely get a manual transmission in my next 911. If for no other reason, then it just looks so much better. But yes, the driving experience is like no other as well. Thank you, manual, for coming back to us. I believe in you. Save the manuals, my friends. So yes, stop dating your cousin. Get a manual transmission. It's the way it should be in a sports car. Anyway, William and I thank you as always for watching and supporting my channel. We'll see you in the next one. I'm still working on the second half of the 992 options video. This is why I've got this car as well. So I'll have that out in the next week or so as well. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye then. And if you're wondering where to acquire the ridiculous t-shirts that I wear in my videos, they're all here in my store, all your favorites, uh, including offensive stamps and my rapid dry towels as well. Yes, Nick Murray t-shirts, being a little inappropriate since 2016.